And with me, sitting to my left again, good friend, brother, uh, retired Green Beret, Mark Bohr. Mark, say hi again, everybody. Hello, everybody. There you go. Hey, I'm happy to be here. This is always good. And you're here for a very special reason, Mark. Well, I'll tell you why? what, why don't you recap? He was here earlier on the, uh, um, I don't know, another segment ago. I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> My brain's fried. Tell everybody why you were here earlier about the uh, the Rucksack March, and then we'll get into this. Uh, All right. This weekend is going to be a very exciting weekend because we've got three people that we want to memorialize and remember. And uh, starting at 8 o'clock on the 19th, next Saturday, 8 o'clock, everybody's going to link up at the Cameron Park, and we are going to go on an eight-mile ruck march. And rucksacks are optional. And this is to memorialize Master Sergeant Charles Price the third and also Lieutenant Darren Andrews, who were both killed over in Afghanistan. Now, th these, these guys are all about service to community, service to their fellow men. Darren was a, a school teacher and a football coach. Uh, Charles Price, he was unfortunately killed a month short of retiring, where he was going to serve his community as a state trooper. So on Saturday, 8 o'clock, we're going to do our ruck march. We're going to come back, drink a lot of water. And then at 1, at 1 o'clock, we have an actual memorial service with a, a guest speaker, uh, Earl Granville. This guy is amazing. He had his leg blown off over in Zormat, another province in uh, Afghanistan. Now he's doing Boston marathons. We got a picture of him right here carrying oh, yeah. somebody across the finish line at the last Boston marathon. The guy's amazing. So now he goes around to uh, disabled veterans' homes and things, and he gives him motivation. He's a spokesperson for Oscar Mike, which means on the move. There ain't nothing we can't handle. And he, he drives that point home. You know what I've noticed? I've noticed um, men and women who have been unfortunate and gotten parts blown off doing their service. It has been, I don't know, I get this impression, it's been so much more accepted. It was, people were awkward. They, they were afraid to look at people because they didn't know how to respond. But that's the impression I got. Somebody had a, uh, a fake leg. Now it's like, it's no big deal. That's so cool that these people move on even though they've got parts of their body missing and they've got, what do you call it? A, a, a prosthetic? A, thank you. A prosthetic device. It's like they just overcome the challenge and move on. I think it's cool. Well, when, I, when I was recovering from cancer, I thought I was a, a hard charger. And my wife and I and some other friends went to do a Tough Mudder exercise where it's an obstacle course over 12 miles. It's pretty hardcore. And in front of me is I'm, I'm sucking wind. There's a guy up there, double amputee, and he's got prosthetics. And he is tracking hard. He is like buffed out. He's an inspiration. Who's that guy who won a track race and then ended up killing his wife with the two fake legs? Uh, Proteus. Or, or, no. Even he could do it. No, that was I mean, a general. That was a general. A pretty damn good general. I'm, I'm only yeah. bringing it up because it was amazing. He, here he is. South Africa. Okay. Go figure. But the, you can do so much with these prosthetics? Yes. Okay. Yes, it is amazing. All right. Last bit of information on this and we'll move on. Well, we, we also have a VFW event where we're memorializing uh, Daryl Howard. We've got a big fundraiser going over there starting at 10 o'clock. we got uh, $6 barbecue plates going on and activities all day long over there. we got musical special guest Bob Yates and other music provided by Dan and John Martinez. And if anybody wants information for that, you can call Melissa at 254-295-6222 or Tom at 254-627-0179. That's going to be a party that is happening all day Saturday. I want to say again, Bob Yates, fantastic voice. Go listen to him. As soon as I'm done with the Ruck March, I'm heading straight over there for, for a good sandwich and a lot of beer. Sounds good. <laughs> Amen. All right, I got, you, I got you on here because I like to have you on a lot because you're a plethora of information. I'm old and I'm experienced. You're experienced. There's some cherries out there in uniform who... Um, you know, they wear the uniform and they kind of like smack you down because they think you might be out of uniform. Uh, I'm going to the place I shouldn't go. Well, you're, go you're going to bring up stolen valor. And I, I okay. appreciate that. I hate stolen valor. And for those people who don't understand, there's a lot of morons in this world who don't have a life. And so they want to steal valor from other soldiers. So they'll walk around a shopping mall or an airport wearing a uniform. They're looking for attention, wanting people like good people, like here in Cameron and Milam County and all around Texas, to come up and shake their hand and say, oh, thank you for your service. Well, you know, those guys are, are it's against the law. It's a federal offense to do that, to wear medals and things. And it's prosecuting. I mean, people are getting prosecuted for that a lot now. But recently, while I was fundraising, 
uh, for uh, Darren Andrews scholarship, I was in uniform to attract attention, and I was in my real combat uniform that I wore in Afghanistan. My sleeves were rolled up. I wore a combat patch that we wore over there as a uh, representative of the Combined Special Operations Task Force, and it's only given to those guys operating in the task force. So we wore those, and when I was out there on the bush doing ops, we were wearing Desert Tiger Stripes. So uniform is relative to the situation. Look, I'm going to say it so you don't have to. Okay. For all you cherries in there, out there wearing a uniform and questioning a guy like this, you need to suck it up and shut up, okay? I was informed well, of the... Inf no, I'm sorry, dude. I got fired up when you're telling me this story. There's some people out there, with their ears, are, they're still green, they're wet, the whole works. They just need to shut up and respect your seniors. Anyway, well, let's move on. Right. We're here. And also, if you haven't been in the box yet, keep your mouth shut and learn from those other guys okay, that have. there you go. <laughs> All right, now it's been said. I've got you on here, Mark, because... Um, I was doing some reading and some training and all this kind of stuff, and something hit me through the reading and the training, and that is, you know, you're always training, not you, but people train under environments that hopefully they can best replicate. Uh, if you come up with a topic, you try to replicate the topic of uh, stress or danger. Well, it's never going to be a perfect world out there. You're going to be in a position of danger, most likely in the worst condition you can think of. And one of the worst conditions I can think of, even though some of you might think it's a good thing to have a lot of people around, but defending yourself in a crowded area, let's say with a handgun, I'm a license to carry, I have to defend myself because I feel I'm going down the line and the sand has been crossed, I have to defend myself, but I'm within the confines of a lot of people. So I wanted to bring you on because I know you've got a lot of experience in this and maybe you can get, apply your military aspect and put it into a civilian term so people can relate to this. Well, well, thank you. And you set a, an excellent stage there. And you said something very important. We're going to be thinking about we're carrying a weapon. If you're carrying a weapon, people, you need to be responsible and trained with a weapon. It's not just a hood ornament. It's not an accessory for your business suit. But it would be one hell of a hood ornament, wouldn't it? Oh, it would. Okay. Yes. I'm surprised you don't have one. You just gave me a thought. But, <laughs> uh, we're in trouble now. but seriously, people, if you're going to carry that weapon, have the mental mindset that you're going to have to use it. Don't carry it and then at the last minute panic, be unsure of yourself, and then just accidentally handle, hand the weapon over to your opponent. You have to, have to have the right mindset. You also have to realize that these are real and viable situations. And for an example, 2007, we had the Blackwater Boys over in Baghdad. I was over there doing protection work for Newsweek and Wall Street Journal when this happened. The Blackwater guys, of course, they're in a military environment and they're driving through a crowd some of the, the terrorists were holding people in front of themselves and then shooting from behind them towards the Blackwater guys. Well, professionals are trained to just get off the X. We need to get out of the kill zone and move out and draw fire. We don't shoot into a crowd. These were obviously amateurs. And Blackwater, they have saved so many lives over in, in Baghdad and elsewhere. I love Blackwater. But they were getting so many contracts that they had to lower their standards to let every chucklehead come in, whether they just got out of uh, a police academy or whatever. Long story short on that one, they shot into a crowd when they didn't have to. They could have just got off the X and moved out. In 2016, Omar Mateen in Orlando, Florida, got to read this, 29-year-old killed 49 people and wounded 58 others in a terrorist hate crime attack inside a Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida. He was shot and killed by Orlando Police Department officers, get this, three hours later during the standoff. Three hours. Now, if we had somebody inside there, if one of those uh, 49 or 58 people had been carrying a weapon and they had the proper training and the proper mindset, they could have eliminated that threat and saved lives. They didn't have to worry about cops negotiating for three hours. You know, somebody's going to say something uh, against about what I'm about to say, and that is... It ain't that difficult. It's not. It's, it's being responsible. It's not that difficult to take out these bad guys. If you're trained, if you've got your uh, faculties with you, your mindset, and you've got some capability with your handgun, in a dark nightclub, taking cover, waiting for the opportunity, you take the shot. I just don't get these people how they stand in the headlights and just blink and not know what to do. They, they are not mentally prepared, and they are full of self-doubt doubt and lack uh. of confidence. 
And also, that was also the deadliest terrorist attack in the United States since the September 11 attacks. One person with the proper mindset and a handgun would have resolved that situation. Also, 2015, nearly 100 dead in the Bataclan Paris concert terrorist attack. Of course, that's France. So who's going to carry a gun there? Uh, Don't they give them up to the <laughs> invading force? Como se va, mon ami? Uh, 2013, the Aurora, Colorado movie theater. This is uh, from an officer there. There was so much blood, the theater floor had become slippery. Bodies with horrific injuries and the eerie sound of cell phones ringing over and over again. One person, properly trained with the proper mindset, could have resolved that situation. So who do you blame on this? What is it? Is it these corporate entities that don't want to pay insurance policies? Or what is it? It drives me batty. What is your hang-up, people? You, you business owners, you corporations with the gun deal. I mean, what is your freaking problem? Well, insurance and paperwork and liability. It's not a profitable situation. And it all comes down to profit and money. It's the same thing with war. It's profit and money. Uh, what have we accomplished over... Don't get oh, me don't, started. Don't get me started, uh, dude. Stay to the notes. Stick to the notes. Folks, I hate the war, but I love the troops. Absolutely, okay? man. Absolutely. All right. So, we avoid these situations if at all possible. But if you... If it's unavoidable, a good friend of mine, a mentor, a leader, one of the most honorable men I've ever worked for when I was with a Special Forces Command on, on the staff there, I worked for a, a man named General Jerry Boykin. Oh, yeah. This man is a god, a former Delta Force commander, Special Forces commander of all of Special Forces. And he said, Mark, never be afraid to charge the guns, but you have to be mentally prepared. And so amongst beatdowns that he gave me constantly, he, he always drove, drove that point home. You don't carry a weapon unless you're prepared to use it in the worst possible environment. And so it, that requires proper training. I've noticed this, too. When you start worrying about getting hurt, guess what? You get hurt. Absolutely. It's weird how that happens. You hesitate. You hesitate. You make stupid moves. Just go with your training, and your training usually can get you through, usually. When you hesitate, you die. Or you cause other people to die. Well, there's another expression, too. It's like uh, those move and live. I'm killing. I'm slaughtering. Move and live as compared to just standing your ground because um, you can't hit. It's on the move, usually. Yes. You can't hit what you can't... Anyway, I'm, I'm sidetracking it. Is that like the run and shoot is more effective than the run and fall down? <laughs> <laughs> Trey, we love you. <laughs> hey, I, uh, we, we've got about five minutes left here, so I'm going to shoot down through this real fast. If you're not properly trained, don't do it, Rambo. Just <laughs> Don't just, do it! Just get the heck out of there and leave it to the professionals, the people that are trained or have the proper mindset. I want to go back to that, though. If you got a license to carry, look, if you go to my Facebook page, there was a, a woman who took my course, my ladies only course a couple of years ago, and she wrote a comment and I read it and I'm thinking, wow, I was like humbled because she got so much out of it. And it was basically this, you know, the license to carry class, and I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, is a joke. It's a literal joke. I'm up there, like whatever, I'm going to be teaching you guys just enough to get yourself killed probably. Because I'm limited on the time. i got to do it in five and a half hours. It used to be almost 15 hour class. So if you're going to get a license to carry and you're going to think you're one of these wannabes because you got a license and a gun, everything's going to be okay, you need to wake up. If you're going to carry, you better know what you're doing. And if you want to know what you're doing, you need to come see me or somebody who knows somebody else who knows what they're doing. I mean, it's better if you come to me. But if there's somebody, <laughs> somebody else, whatever. As long as they know, as long as they know what they're talking about. And I don't want this crap where it's like, well, the computer says this, and it's, um, what's the thing on the com the uh, what do you call those? Oh, the computer. They're teaching you by computer. What's it? PowerPoints. Oh. I hate PowerPoints. People who teach by PowerPoints cannot teach on their own. They PowerPoint need doesn't bleed, folks. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, go ahead. I get excited. Here. Okay. Yeah. So. I leave it to the professionals, but if you are trained, if you are mentally and physically able, execute with extreme prejudice and commitment. Once you move, you are committed, so, so do it. And here's a few things that you have to consider. Okay, folks, write this down. Quick target analysis, 100%, and it has to be split second. 
and obviously if you're mentally prepared you're already doing this so who has the weapon and presents the biggest mass casualty producing threat sometimes these guys operate in teams so you have to be looking not only for the primary gunner but for his assistants is there more than one target if it's not and these targets they're not humans anymore they're just targets with a face you have to get out of the idea that this is a human being and that you're killing a human being you are instantaneously eliminating the threat Colonel Rex Applegate once said that once entering the room you eliminate the first target who moves they have already started to mentally take action and therefore they have become your biggest threat and go to where the action is on the move it's because you go to where the action is but be careful of their overwatch team again you can, you might be moving in closing the threat onto the threat to eliminate the threat but he has somebody watching him so so keep constantly scan now he's taking this off of military terms but it can be applied easily to civilian terms because a bad guy comes in most of the time it comes in twos or threes if if you if there's like a uh, uh, I'm sorry if there's a conven convenience store hold up it's not a movie theater it's not a, a big opera house or anything it's a convenience store you might have six people in there but that guy probably has a guy in a car waiting all right so be be aware if they see in the car that you're moving against their partner they may come in and engage you so always be be aware of secondary threats and here's another thing too you must decide what the line is in the sand and a lot of it comes to body language too i'm teaching this a lot of my class i'll give two different scenarios and one scenario is the guy comes in and says hey man give me the money real quick put it in the bag and you could tell he just wants to race out of there you're like okay just give it to him let him go then there's another one where the guy comes in, he's real slow, he doesn't care, the camera's on him, he's pointing the gun around, he's like, give me a pack of smokes, put some money in here, the gun's pointed at him, and if you're somebody behind the bean and weenie section seeing this, you're saying to yourself, this guy doesn't care, so now it just escalated it big time, you better be proficient with that handgun and your mental faculties, go ahead. That's why God made the triple tap. <laughs> and then uh, know your backstops. Be aware of what's behind the person. If you're lining your shot up, you don't want to make sure that that uh, convenience store clerk is directly behind him. Know your angles and what is behind you because as soon as you engage the threat, he's going to engage you. So be sure that you have a clean backstop behind you. Uh, always move. Constantly move. Don't be that stationary target. I was mentioning that before, yeah. Yep. And when targets are illuminated. Yeah, but if you're on the move, you better have the capability of shooting on the move with, a, with accuracy. And that's what we teach in our seminars, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. When the targets are illuminated, assess and secure and safeguard. Or, I, I wrote illuminated. I meant eliminated. When he's down on the ground, you, you remove the weapon fr from the casualty in case he's, he's faking it, right? Secure the weapon. Secure the scene. Uh, assess the ca for casualties. Maybe somebody's wounded. Immediately call 911. Let them know that you are a friendly. Identify yourself so when they come into the convenience store, they don't shoot you, which has happened before. Yes. And uh, that's part of identifying yourself, and I have paused. You have what? Well, great but, information. By God, let's get out to the range, people. Let's go to the range. Let's go to these seminars and train, train, train. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look yourself in the mirror. Seriously, if you're thinking about carrying a gun for self-defense or home defense, if you're not even getting a license, but you're going to have this gun, you go to the store to buy a gun for home defense, and you don't practice or learn or get your mindset right, don't even buy it. Go buy yourself, spend that money on a package of movie tickets, okay, because that's all it's good for. If you go and buy a gun and think just because you got a gun, you're good to go now, you are kidding yourself. Because when the adrenaline pumps, those ten fingers you have on, those five fingers you have on each hand, ten fingers, they turn into three on each hand. You start fumbling. I know. I'm extremely experienced, and I can fumble under stress. And if that's the case, I know for sure you can. And we can help eliminate that by training you with basic concept ideas that you can take home and practice every day and get better and better and better. we got a ladies' seminar on August 26th. That's a Saturday. It's all day long. Go to Aaron'sGunshop.com on the uh, High Cap Adventure page, and you see the flyer. I believe it's the one on the top right. You can click on that, or give me an email, Aaron'sGunshop at gmail.com, or give us a call. We'll get you lined up. If you've got a group of five or more. Let me know. We can set up a class date for you. Mark, you want to finalize with anything before we go to break? The, the only thing I want to add to this is, folks, if you can avoid the situation at all possible, you, you want to get out of this thing safe. Everybody wants to get out of it safe. 
But if it's unavoidable, you have to execute with extreme prejudice there you go. and commitment. There you go. The three A's. Acknowledge the threat. Avoid it if at all possible. I'm sorry. Be aware of your surroundings and avoid it if at all possible. Trey, let's take a one-minute break. Mark, thank you very much for coming on the show. Hang tight for a little bit. And uh, we'll see you on the other side about a one-minute break. Awesome. You are. Yeah. Seriously. You. <laughs> okay. You may enjoy this. I'm going to go over this today. If you don't, cool. you fast. Not only Dude, fast, but thorough. Your sponsors Aaron's come through. Bin shop and high so do I. I mean, these the flash come through. Thank you, Trey. That means a lot to me. You saying that? Call me, Matt Petros, at 254 697 4721. Or email me at Aaron's Gunshop at Gmail.com. Love it because I come in here and learn something. Set up a class or seminar to get you started on the road. You might be able to interject on this. I'm going to have, what, about eight, seven minutes? Not even that. Then you start a new fundraiser for him. Seminars to cover most forms of firearms. Let me get back on after this call. 254-697-4721. There's not going to be any music. There's not going to be any music. We got about 10 seconds. 15 seconds. The time for games is over. Reality starts now. Aaron's Gunshop.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Aaron's High Cap Adventure Radio Program. We've got about six minutes left, and I've been, we just got done talking with a good friend, Mark Boyer, retired Green Beret, about uh, protecting yourself in a crowd. And this kind of relates. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while because people ask me a lot, what kind of ammunition to use? What kind of self-defense ammunition to use? And they're showing me all these different types of hollow points. Okay, So what kind of self-defense ammo do you use and why, they ask me. I used to use hollow points, but being in the business that I'm in and having an indoor range, I get to see thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds. And out of those thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds, I see hundreds and hundreds of hollow point ammunition bullets that don't do what they were supposed to do. And people will say, well, it's because you're in a range. No, I don't care. It's It's supposed to do what it's supposed to do. And what it does, a lot of them, is nothing. You get all these high dollar expensive hollow point shock weight or whatever they call them. Hydro shock. Hydro shocks. They don't open up. And I got a box full of them. And I'm saying to myself, I cannot deal with this. I must not have ammunition that opens up when it wants to open up. So, and the other problem with hollow point ammunition is, depending on the type of gun that you have and the year it's made, how old it is, older guns will have machining marks in them. Some will. Let's use an old style 1911 of some time ago when it's not as polished out of the box, okay? You're going to have some machining marks in it. If you get a hollow point, and there's different types of hollow points. There's hollow points that look very cone-shaped, which have a very sharp edge. And then there's hollow points that have more of a curved edge to it, but it still can potentially cause a problem. As it's being stripped off the magazine follower, those edges can catch on one of those machining marks and cause a malfunction. Because the gun was basically designed for a full metal, full metal jacketed round. And what a full metal jacketed round is, is a basic cartridge that's got the round nose to it, copper uh, jacketed, the whole works. It's very slick. It's got a great little radius to it. So when it goes up the feed ramp, it feeds very nicely. But when you start using hollow point ammunition, sometimes it catches on it. And then the other factor is, seeing how many of these rounds don't open up, it makes me a little nervous. So... I was introduced by a customer of mine some many years ago about Powerball. Now, I'm not saying Powerball is the savior of the world. I'm saying it works for me. It's proven. I promote it. I believe in it. I trust it. And here's why. Powerball. I'm I'm looking at my 9mm box here. It's 9mm Luger plus P. It's a 100 grain Powerball. Let's talk about basic full metal jacketed. 9 millimeter ammunition. In most cases, it's 115 grains. This one is 100, 100 grains. Because it's a hollow point and not a solid mass, you lose some grain. It went from 115 to 100 grain. But it's a plus P, got a little bit more velocity to it. But here's why I like it. The Powerball is a hollow point. Inside of the hollow point, is a some type of synthetic ball and what happens is when you put the synthetic ball inside the hollow point it causes the hollow point to get a full metal jacketed profile it's got the same profile 
as a regular full metal jacketed bullet, which means it's going to feed up the ramp every time. Doesn't matter if it's got machine marks or not, if it's a polish, whatever. It's just like a full metal jacketed round. The other thing is, when I fire it and the bullet hits its designated target, the synthetic ball pushes inside of the hollow point and it causes the outside edges of the hollow point to expand outwardly, giving you a mushroom effect every time the round is fired. A hydroshock round, and I'm probably not going to have this on video. I may have it on video. But when they work, they work great. The problem is the hundreds and hundreds of rounds that don't work scare me. I'm willing to take off a little bit of grain as long as I know that every shot is going to do what it's supposed to do. And that is to open up so when it hits you, it gives you the most knockdown effect and does not over penetrate and go through the person or target, designated target. So if you want to check it out, actually, ANC Firearms got these too. Power Balls. Power Ball. Call them up. They've got 9mm, 40, 45s, 380s. Great ammo. Check it out. And you don't lose much grainage. And, but it's consistently uh, works all the time. I've done it in many different mediums. And it opens up and does the same thing every time I shoot. So when people ask me, what do I use? I use Power Ball for self-defense. And that, those are the reasons why. Now, Trey, how much time I got? About 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you how much of a pleasure it is to speak to you every week. Please, please support our sponsors. If there's any sponsors out there, potential sponsors who want to become part of the program, give me a call. Give me an email at aaronsgunshop at gmail.com. Love to talk to you and uh, get you squared away on the program here. Don't forget, we're played, replayed again on KRXT, KRXT 98.5 FM in Rockdale. And until next week, keep your powder dry and God bless. Woohoo!